welcome for the launch of Ayugan Nin Wuchi Manju Inishkwe, uh, which is translated as I am a damn savage. What and also what have you done to my country by Anantan Kapesh. So my name is Deanna Bader and I'm a member of Métis Nation of BC and I acknowledge that I'm speaking from the unceded ancestral territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh and Coquitlam peoples. Uh, I invite with you to share in the uh, chat box um, the territories that you are sending in from. And I'm really, really pleased to be talking about this book. Some of you might be in the same situation as I am, which is even though I am a specialist in Indigenous literatures, I and I, of course, have known about Maria Campbell's canonical work, Half-Breed, that came out in 1973. It was really only in recent years in discussions with Sarah Henze that I even heard about Anantan Kapesh's, you know, equally canonical work, uh, and, but, but never to this date available in, in English language. And so I am absolutely thrilled and proud that Wilfred Laurier has, uh, has um, supported this book for publication because it, it, there's a wide, wide audience for it. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to invite, uh, introduce our speakers. I'm then going to, in order to start this off in a good way, have us begin by listening to the words of uh, 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 of Anantan Anantan Kapesh um, through the translation. So Sarah has a passage that she's going to read. And uh, then I'll be um, really moderating and going from person to person as they talk about their role in bringing this book to light. So I'm really excited to be able to see many familiar faces and names here and uh, look forward to uh, the conversation as it unfolds. By the way, this is being recorded and um, I believe will be available for viewing on the website should you want to share it with students or that kind of thing. Okay. Um, we are, uh, the first I'd like to introduce Dr. Marguerite McKenzie, who is a professor emeritus in linguistics at Memorial University. Um, uh, Dr. McKenzie is a founding member of the St. John's Native Friendship Center and is an Innu language consultant with the Labrador Innu School, School Board. Um, Marguerite has been working with speakers of Cree, Niskapi, and Innu, um, uh, Innu languages uh, for the past 50 years. So it's really wonderful to have her here with us. We also have Ganani Panashue Davis, who is a member of, of Shishatsu Innu First Nation. Ganani is currently working as the Director of Professional and Administrative Services with the Innu Education in Shishachu, Labrador. In 2008, uh, Ganani was the first Innu woman to convocate from Memorial University with a Bachelor of Education. She is a trained linguist in standardized Innu spelling and she's served on the task force for Memorial University and currently sits on the board with the task force for Indigenous University um, with the Labrador Institute. Ganani has developed many children's books in Innu Amen and resides in Shijaju with her family. And then I'm going to just quickly also introduce uh, uh, Jeremy Ambroise, who's just a little delayed um, because so that you'll know him when he comes up. And Jeremy Ambroise is a language advisor at the Chakabash Institute in Ouachet, Quebec. Um, he is also an undergraduate research assistant at Carleton University, working on the language maintenance and preservation in the digital age project. Okay. And then also, and uh, last but not least, is Dr. Sarah Henze. Um, uh, very, very pleased, given that I'm in Vancouver, to introduce her as a professor, uh, an assistant professor at Simon Fraser University, um, jointly appointed to the Departments of French and, Indi and Indigenous Studies just as of July. Uh, Sarah is a settler scholar who's one of the first and, and one of the few in Canada who are proficient in the study of Indigenous literatures in French as well in, as in English. And so I'm just so thrilled to see all of you here today. So perhaps we'll just start off by hearing a few of Anantan Kapesh's words in translation, 
and then I'll begin to start the conversation. So, Sarah. Um, hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to see all these faces. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Diana, for moderating this panel. Um, and uh, thanks to the other participants for joining us. Um, so I figured I would read just from the preface in English. And um, Jeremy, I don't want to put you on the spot since you joined us a little late, but um, if you wanted to maybe read um, the preface in Inu after, um, or maybe Marguerite, or, or doesn't matter, anyway. Yeah, sure. Great, thank you. Okay, so in English, the preface reads, in my book, there is no white voice. When I thought about writing to defend myself and to, to defend the culture of my children, I had to first think carefully because I knew that writing was not a part of my culture. And I did not like the idea of having to leave for the big city because of this book I was thinking of doing. After carefully thinking about it, and after having made me, an Inu woman, the decision to write, this is what I came to understand. Any person who wishes to accomplish something will encounter difficulties, but nonetheless, she should never get discouraged. She will nevertheless have to constantly follow her idea. Nothing will make her want to give up until this person will find herself alone. She will no longer have any friends, but that is not what should discourage her either. More than ever, she will have to accomplish the thing she had thought of doing. Shefferville, September, 1975. <laughs> But ma, the man mammoth Nendi, you were smothered Sandy D. M. Nejanut, the moon in the new. Game yam, a pumpin yam, they take Jim Stutenat, Nehut Musnegan, Kaiden Mansus, you do not. Pusuk Munodma. Kajiman mammon man, get ya with daddy yan, a no square yam, Sajimus Nejayan. A one does not study. Kesno <laughs> I would so good tan, we jaywan. Yat no me no ne no che wood but the tenement. We mot yat no che we told them ne no che one okay then duck to the two duck. Kate the scan not to scope him. Get now pay stir, magni was that now potato kate stem, Mr. Dow. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to start off with the words by the author herself, even if she can't be here. Uh, for those, uh, I welcome everyone. Should you have questions, uh, just to put them into the chat and we'll monitor that uh, as best we can. Um, we're going to really uh, go around and talk about how this book came um, into publication, this version of it, the translation. So I'd like to, um, you know, uh, um, first by by recognizing or thanking the author Anna Tenkapesh herself, but go to Sarah to ask her um, to tell us a little bit about Kapesh and the original publication of the book. Um, okay, um, so I actually um, to to explain to you a little bit about the history of the publication, I thought it would be more interesting to show you uh, the different covers. Um, so let me just share this with you. There we go. Um, can you see that? Yes. Um, so the first text, Je suis une maudite sauvagesse, um, was published in 1976. And the piece that uh, Jeremy and I just read from you was 
from the preface of that book dated um, September 1975. Um, so this book was published in a bilingual format, Inu French, um, by Montreal-based publisher Le Miac. And essentially that was the main um, version that was in circulation and that a couple of us got secondhand versions of, um, but otherwise it was largely unavailable. Um, there was a republication in 1982 by the French um, publisher in Paris, uh, Edition des Femmes, which is a feminist publisher. Um, there are a couple of us who've tried to figure out how they got to know about the text, but it's really hard to find uh, people from back then and who were involved in the project. And obviously that uh, version was only published in French. Uh, so essentially the text was unavailable out of print, um, largely unknown, although of course people knew about it, uh, until 2015 when uh, the Native Friendship Center in Saguenay, uh, Centre d'Amitié Autochtone de Saguenay, um, took it upon themselves to uh, do an in-house publication of both of Anantan Kapesh's books. Um, and I think that's that's an important thing that I that I think needs to be acknowledged is that it was a, a friendship center that decided to take that upon themselves, and only after um, that that text finally was available again, um, a number of you know larger uh, publishers suddenly realized, oh well, maybe we should get this text republished. Um, Le Meac, the original publisher. Obviously, they held on to the rights up until um, um, the author passed away in 2004. So they did have the rights for almost 30 years, but they didn't republish it. Um, and as for her second text, uh, Catch Fait de Mon Pays, um, it was also published in both languages, in French and in Inu, but in two books, as you can see at the bottom on the left there. Um, by a tiny little Montreal um, publisher called Edition Impossible, uh, who existed still for a couple of years and who kind of disappeared in 1981. Um, and then this I think is important because the text was, uh, the Inu text was standardized and used as um, a course textbook uh, in 1998 and then republished in 2004 and actually that one was republished just before Anantan Kapesh passed away. Uh, so for instance, uh, she made a request um, in the change of the title. Um, and then same thing, um, also dormant until 2015, um, until the Friendship Center took it, basically they took on both books and republished them. Um, and because the 2015 versions actually were, were so successful, um, you know, it wasn't a sustainable project because it was an in-house uh, project. It was on their own budget. Um, and so there was a lot of discussion between um, the family, uh, the Friendship Center who had technically the rights for the following 10 years, and then a potential other publishers who wanted to take on the project. So in 2019, uh, the Friendship Center reverted or retroceded the rights back to John André uh, who then entered into a new contract with Montreal-based publisher uh, Mémoire d'Entrier, um, who published the two, uh, the two new versions, which you see on the right. Um, and those two versions, or rather, uh, Je suis une maudite sauvagesse, um, the new version was entirely standardized uh, for the first time as well, um, with, um, by, in large part by Jérémy Ambroise, who is with us today. Um, and the original translator in French, José Mayol, also uh, reworked aspects of her translation. Um, so it really took, you know, a good 40 years for the, for the text to, to be back in, in circulation. And now um, they're available as ebooks. Um, so I think that there's like a whole new rebirth of this text. And I'm hoping that both the French and the English versions um, will become more, more well-known and used in different classes, different courses, um, and in different languages. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Jeremy, I'm wondering if, um, if you could uh, add to, uh, I understand that you did a lot of work on the original Inu language, 
that was republished in this book. And I just wonder if you could share with the um, what that work entailed. Uh, well, uh, well, it was Marguerite who, who first contacted me. Who really started to work because she she worked on the manuscript a little. She she changed the things she could. Um, but then she asked me to to look over the, the manuscript, and and I did so um, first on my own. But then there were some things that I wasn't sure of, so I got in touch with uh, Jose Mayo, who worked with um, uh, Capes. And then there were still some issues that we, we couldn't uh, fix, you know, because uh, some of the words are, you know, only known by elder elders. So we decided to uh, form a a group of elders to work with, and there were four of them. Um, and there was Jidit Mastakosho, who is from uh, the Inu community, uh, Inu community of Kwanjit. There was uh, Philemon Jordan, or Grégoire, uh, who was from Washap. There was Cécile Bellefleur from Maliotenam. And um, there was also, uh, who was the last one? I'm really sorry, I don't. <laughs> well, there was four of them. And uh, yeah, and um, yeah. Uh, and uh, after two days of work, we finally came up with a, a final version of the, the manuscript. Yeah. Thank you for, for listing their names. And, and I mean, if you do think of the last one, it would be good to record it because, I mean, I, I know having had the chance to watch Sarah, the work she was doing, I could see how, I mean, this is not simply a matter of she sat down and she translated, you know, oh, what a quick little project. This was years of chasing down copyright. And then of course, for you, it wasn't the matter of you simply translating, you know, like proofreading the Inu, but, in, but this huge, collaborative process. I'm really glad that you, you made that that obvious. Thank you. Oh, uh, and it, the last one, the last member was uh, Anne-Marie André. Anne-Marie yeah. André. That's great. Yeah. And I, I had mentioned before that this is being recorded, so we've got this on record now as, as all of you, as you go to teach these books, can share these the all these names and all these collaborators. Thank you. I, um, Switching to uh, Marguerite, I, I just want to ask you from your position as a, an, a new linguist, um, how important has this book been? And did you ever beat Anand and Kabesh? Oh, we've got. Yeah. Yes, um, and I'd like to uh, give you a little uh, thumbnail of pre-publication -publi pre times. Uh, I did know Anne Kabesh, I met her um, back in the 70s. Um, the early 1970s were a seminal moment for uh, Indigenous language teaching and study in particularly in Quebec. Um, the uh, regional Quebec Office of Indian Affairs had uh, supported and funded a, a teacher training program which included all the um, spoken Indigenous languages in the province of Quebec um, and courses were set up and offered at the newly established Manitou College in um, the uh, north of Montreal, at, uh, near the, outside the village of La Macazon um, in the Laurentians. Uh, every summer, uh, language teacher, Indigenous language teachers from each community would travel for six weeks to that college. It was an old Beaumark Bissell base and there was lots of very nice housing, very nice uh, trees and all sorts of things, um, lived together and took courses. There was a linguist for each group. Uh, I, I worked with the Cree and uh, Jose worked with the, the Innu who in those days were called Montagnac. Um, we, uh, we were establishing uh, standardization of uh, writing systems, uh, dictionaries where these writing systems would be codified, um, 
working uh, with the speakers to uh, make sure they understood as much as we understood, which wasn't very that much in those days, about the grammar of the language. And uh, people were also receive, receiving regular teacher training, you know, pedagogy and classroom management, psychology, all that sort of thing. It was a wonderful time. And side by side, the college was going ahead um, as a CEGEP, that is, a, the, you know, in Quebec, they have the college in between high school and the university. Uh, and that was actually a seminal time as well. You know, the, at the end of the 60s, the early 70s, you had the red, a white paper on Inu educa and Indian education, and then the response, the red paper. Uh, and the indigenous people from across Canada came to that college and uh, set up relationships, which I think really persisted as those people um, matured and became political leaders. Unfortunately, the college was shut down by the Canadian government after three years, and the rumor was that it was at the top of the list of threats to the Canadian state. But with respect to Indigenous language, it was wonderful. And I can say from my view, you know, 50 years later, that um, no province in this country has had as good um, language support language um, in, the, you know, in the schools, number of indigenous language teachers, that sort of thing. And Innu in particular, which you know, has been recorded since the, you know, the French missionaries arrived in the 1600s. They have, you know, the Jesuit relations are full of Innu writings and that sort of thing. Uh, but at that time, 1973, 74, 75, Jose and I were teaching in that summer program and and Kabesh came there one summer when she was working on her manuscript because she worked very, very closely with Jose. Jose was very fluent in Innu and uh, had lived in Shefferville where, uh, and, and it's Andene, it's the Innu pronunciation of Andre is Andene. Kabesh lived as well. They were very good friends. So Anne uh, came to the college that summer and worked in the library. My husband remembers because he was there working in the library too uh, and uh, wrote, you know, just sat there for the summer and wrote and consulted with Jose um, because Jose herself is a talented writer. Uh, so it was a very strong collaboration and I think Jose also worked very hard on the publications at that time. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that um, was something, you know, how uh, that was what I knew about her at that time. And then, you know, I'd meet her off and on over the years as uh, I worked with the, the Innu in Quebec. Yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you. I have to ask you, Ganani, um, both as a um, person from the community, if, if um, you remember this book from um, when you were a child, but also as a, as a linguist, as a trained linguist, how you view the book today and the, this work today. Uh, and, and actually, did you meet Kapesh as well? I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, was she? Yeah. I, prob I probably did meet her, but I was probably really young. Um, I remember seeing this book at a young age uh, because my mom had it. Uh, my mom had the book and she could read uh, in any way more. So uh, mom knows her well. And uh, so I think I was probably not even born when... <laughs> when uh, Mom had this uh, this book and you know read it new and Kabesh, uh, but uh, yeah. So I like I had I haven't read it when I was young, but I, I remember seeing it at mom's mom's table many times. Yeah. And is have you been using it? Is it being used for in in your language teaching? now before the public uh like before this publication but the other versions that sarah has mentioned it has been in our schools yes it has been in our schools but it's in french uh so this is the first um one that i've seen that's written in english and in you know so the inu uh the inu staff have been you know it's in our library the older the older version and uh the one that's written in inu and french so um but um some some staff have have been able to read read the uh, the book in Inu, uh, but 
we haven't been able to use it because it's in French in in our in our English because it's all English and and you know in a, in Labrador. Right. Oh, yeah. Amazing. It's amazing. I'm so, so it's really good to have. It's where it's written in, in English now. Now we'll be able to use it in our high school classes for our high school students. So it'll be very very useful and informative for, for many of the English students. I mean, that uh, that ha hasn't occurred to me because, of course, I think about the English speaker readers in, 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 in English Anglo Canada, but I didn't think, of course, that the community even uh, would find might find it more accessible. So that's really exciting. Um, Sarah, is there any part of this story that we've missed in the coming of the all the details? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just with regards to what Ganani was just saying, um, originally um, the press asked me, well, are you sure you want to do it in a bilingual format because it already exists in French and you and and part of the idea was was for it to be accessible to um, Anglophone Inu readers and speakers. Um, so that was one thing. And, and as you some of you who've seen the book, um, we try to have it so that the texts are actually facing each other by paragraph so that readers can follow. Um, and, um, and the other thing I wanted just to mention is, Vienna, you're right, it did take a long time. It took four years. Um, and I, I have to thank you also in terms of the people and the, and the text project, because that's how this kind of started percolating, this idea of, of texts that needed to be, um, you know, resurfaced and re-acknowledged. Um, and, uh, and Marguerite talked a lot about Josie and for sure, like I was very, very lucky to be able to talk with her a lot. We had a lot of emails and phone conversations. Um, and um, yeah, I think that it took a very long time but that was necessary um, to be able to talk to all these people. And um, this is just the first version of the translation, so. Hopefully, maybe one day, um, you know, uh, someone can translate it directly from Inu into English because um, obviously I translated it from the French. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's still a lot to say, uh, past and future wise. I, I remember the moment when I was re reading it, your translation when it before it was published. Just that sense of excitement of how you know how. Uh, I think people will, will, will just love reading this, actually. Um, other, other panelists, is there anything else about the story that you want to make sure that we all know before I open it up to larger questions? I mean, because this is such an example of uh, collaborative research ethics, Indigenous, following Indigenous protocols. Um, and then the questions about linguistics, I'm not as familiar with, and, but I'd love to know what, um, if there's anything else you want to say. Um, I'll have something to say. Um, uh, something that people may be interested in, but I'm not sure if they could access. When the uh, one of the versions was uh, uh, published by the uh, Chikabish Institute, it came with a CD in the back. And uh, this has been very valuable in the schools as well. And uh, they had the book read by speakers of three different dialects. Oh, wow. Yeah. One of the reasons that this book is important is that it was one of the first uh, books which was written in a standard, you know, uh, the standard spelling. Um, it wasn't totally standardized because the, the, there were, uh, it took another 20 years really before the final um, version. And actually we're still tweaking the spelling a little bit these days, Jeremy can attest to that. Uh, but, uh, it could be used as a read-along book. It was, this was only for the Dandi uh, Dutaman to see what have you done with my country, which your readers will find, you know, is both books are highly political. And Anne Gabesh was a very strong, very politicized woman. She was the first female chief in, uh, the, in Washat, I think the uh, community, Setil, community at Setil. Um, but, and, uh, but for the uh, What Have You Done With My Country, she has cast it in the form of a traditional myth, an ad nugan. So it, uh, you know, the first one, Je suis un maudit is just straight uh, what she thinks about the world. 
with no uh, punches pulled, but the other one is set up more in, it, you'd think it was a children's story at first, but it is, you know, when you look behind, you get that political, how our, how we lost our culture and our land and everything else, but set up like a, a traditional uh, myth or legend, you know, called an Adenugan in, in that, in that language. Yeah. That's it for Thank me. you. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Jeremy, um, is there, I didn't ask you if you've ever uh, had the chance to meet Kapesh, I'm not sure if she, or if you have anything more to say. No, uh, when she passed away, I was still uh, a teenager, so I never really get to, yeah, I kind of saw her in our community, but I wasn't really interested in lang in, in, in any language back then, so uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but yeah, I've never really got to know her. The, ex the possibility, though, of turning this into an audiobook seems obvious if you just think about, I mean, obvious with, if there was proper support for the Inus language speakers, and get it, uh, especially with how accessible technology is right now. I don't know, Ganani, do you have anything else to say about the book or even about the, the potential? <laughs> Let's start a pro research project that your <laughs> institute could run. <laughs> I think it's very uh, it's very interesting to uh, read the, uh, the book and uh, because I, I can even hear my own mom talking when I read you know read the, the book and how she talks about you know uh, Sherberville and when they moved there and you know and all the uh, in, injustices done on the Inu people so uh, just to hear it from an elder speak about that and it's somebody so. To me, it feels like it's someone that's so close um, to me. And I know I met her, but I was probably so young uh, because we've traveled so many times in Quebec. My parents, my mom, uh, has been to Cheverville many times. And um, for some reason, that name just rings a bell. Uh, so to read her book and to, you know, kind of, it just brings back memories of how I've heard there's consistently about elders, um, you know, the treatment of when the white man came and, and you know, when education started, uh, the white education, she called it, you know. So it's really, really interesting. And I think it's gonna, it's gonna be um, really useful in schools. So I'm really glad that it's written both in Inu and in English, because it's like um, Sarah said, it's, you know, one, one side of the book is uh, in Inu, you know, and in English, so I'd read the English, and then I, I go back and read the English. It's like, so it's 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 really interesting to, to see that. It's really fantastic. Well, just to add, so that everyone knows, uh, you can order the book on the Wilfrid Laurier website with a, a, a deduction. But in the next thirty days, if you use the code, coupon code launch in caps, um, you'll get free shipping as well um, if you want to order the book. But Let's open this up to questions. I would be really interested to hear from anybody who had knew about this book, uh, you know, uh, in what way you knew about it, and if it 